Hey everyone, today we'll be taking a quick look at the Singularity Identity Platform by Sentinel One. Now, this product is usually something we recommend for our clients who already have their endpoints secured by EDR. And instead of focusing solely on endpoint protection, we're actually adding layers of security to the Active Directory portion of your environment. Now, these layers come in three different categories. We have passive protection, active protection, and finally, deception. We'll start with passive protection, which can be treated like an ongoing vulnerability scan. So to access this, we can go to Analysis, Ranger AD. So the first thing we see here is actually our dashboard, which groups up some important information about our domains and their exposures. So we can see we have a health score of 69%, which is considered medium risk. We do have all our exposures based on severity and we have accounts. So in this case, for example, very high, we checked for 18 vulnerabilities of which only six were found in our environment. After that, we do have Active Directory Health, which is the health score uh, plotted in time. So for example, in this case, we had a scan on the fourth and then we had a separate scan on the 12th. And based on these columns, we can see that on the 12th, we actually had more exposure than on the 4th, which is why we can see our health score, the blue line here, is actually decreasing. Furthermore, we have three boxes here. So we have the domains assessed, because we do support multiple forests, the users, and the computers, and a bit of information about all these uh, objects. Now, if we actually want to see our exposures themselves, we have two options, either AD exposures for on-prem, or Azure exposures for on cloud. In my case, I'm on prem, so I'll click AD exposures. Here we'll have a nice list of all the exposures that were found in our domain based on the previous scans. So, for example, we do have a detection called Domain Controller with Prince Pooler enabled. So, we get the domain name, the vulnerable objects which we can view, the reason slash description, and of course, the severity. Now in details, we'll get a bit more information about the vulnerability itself and what it entails. So we get the same summary as we had previously, some references, and of course the remediation steps. In this case, it's a manual remediation. The additional information, which is some insights about why it scored as a very high severity. So in this case, it's because we have remote code execution. And finally, we get the objects. Now, in the event where the objects are not, uh, for example, a domain controller, so we get users, groups, computers, we'll actually see there's a remediate button next to them. So for example, let's take dangerous access rights delegation on critical objects. We see that we now have the remediate button, so we'll click it and we'll see the same information as we have previously. However, in objects, we'll see that we have users, computers, and groups. And we also have the Remediate Now button. So if I click on this, it will ask me which objects I want to uh, remediate. So in this case, we have John, Senior Management, Client01, and Project Management. In the event where John actually needs those access rights, we can uncheck him. Now in this case, I'll just keep them all checked. I'll click Next, Continue. And now I can generate a script, which I'll be able to move over to my domain controller and execute to remediate those objects. Finally, we do have the remediation history, which will keep track of all the remediations that we've done previously. So for example, in this case, six objects with one exposures, we fully remediated it. Meanwhile, here we do have a partial remediation since we did, for example, select uh, all the objects except for John, so we partially remediated it. And we can always see the details of this, which uh, objects were remediated. And of course, we can generate a new script, which will undo uh, all the changes that we've done.